Hey everyone, so this has probably been my most requested video in the last like two months and I've only been running this YouTube channel for like six, five months. So I wanted to make a little video today about how I got into ETH. Okay, so I guess I'll just start with all of my qualifications that I had when I was applying. What I did was I did honors mechanical engineering at McGill University in Canada. In Canada, our last year, we have to do a year, uh, a year long project, probably with industry, sometimes with a professor. And instead in honors, you do research with a professor. So you don't do it with four people in a group, you do it individually um, under the supervision of a postdoc or a master's student or something like that. So I did research for a year in a lab Right off the bat, I did really good work. I worked really hard, I made a really good impression, and I made really meaningful relationships. And so my professor, I'm pretty sure he wrote me like a phenomenal letter of recommendation. So right off the bat there, I have a year of research, and I have a year at this time because I applied by December, but I started in January the that full year. So I had a year of research and submitting my master's thesis and be, or my my bachelor's thesis and so because I was already doing this research for a year in my letter of intent for application, my motivation letter, I already knew what I liked. I knew what I wanted to do at ETH and I was able to communicate what I knew, like what I learned and how I wanted to apply that because I had already worked and figured out what I like. The other thing that really helped is that, and I would really suggest that you do this, in any university you apply to, you should really, first of all, figure out what you like, of course, then figure out what other labs in the world work on what you do. So when you're applying, say you want to apply to uh, Caltech in the States, let's just take that, you should go through every professor in the department that you want to apply to and see if their research relates to anything you like. And then even before you apply, you go and you email that professor. I even mailed physical letters when I didn't get a response back for an email, I would mail them a physical letter and then like two months would go by and I would get a response to my email because they would see my letter. So that's what I would do. And then even in your motivation letter, now that you know what you like, what you're passionate about, and this university has what you want to do and you know which professor works on that stuff, you put all of that in the motivation letter and you say, this is why I want to go to ETH because you have this prof, he works on this, this is what I did in my undergraduate research experience and we, we're, we're a perfect match. So that's pretty much what I did and what you should do too. So that's the research part. Um, the other thing was that I had really good grades, not really good, I didn't have a 4.0, I had a 3.83. So a 3.83 out of four. So most of my grades were A's. Sometimes I had, I had A minuses and then I have like two B's or something like that on my transcript. Yeah, they were good grades, but obviously they weren't the best. I know people that had way better grades than me that don't have that much success in applying to um, university, like for master's programs at some of the top schools. So grades aren't everything. I would say that your research experience and how much professors vouch for you is way more important. For example, the professor that I worked with at McGill, he's very, very well known in the combustion community. So I would say that having him write me a letter of recommendation was very useful for my application. Oh, the GREs. My GRE scores were so bad. I don't really remember, but like if this is the scale of like zero to a hundred, like a hundred is the best grade you can have and zero is the worst grade you could have. For English, I was like in the middle somewhere, like snack in the middle, which is terrible because English is my first language and I know there's tons of people that apply to the, like have phenomenal GRE scores that don't even speak English. And my math was like somewhere around 75%. I'm an engineer, <laughs> like my math, find the uh, area of this circle, you know, it should be a lot better than around 75%. But that just goes to show that like, you know, these tests, like these 
ridiculous. I think the GRE is total BS. These ridiculous tests don't determine your future. So that's just what you should keep in mind. You should always like apply to that job, apply to that school, really like think about why you want it. Don't just apply because just applying means nothing. Like why would you just apply for something if you're just like, oh, I'll see if I get it. Like figure out what you want, figure out what you're good at and like try to match what you're good at with what the job or the university or the lab has. In everything that I'm saying, what I do, even if you do it exactly the same way that I do, it doesn't mean you're gonna get in. You might even have worse grades than me, worse jury scores, and not even do that much research and get in. It's always a bit of luck. It always depends on who else applied that year. Like, did other people that were way better than you apply? Then they're probably gonna get in. Did other people, or like, did, did I just apply in a year where there weren't that many really good people. You know what I mean? So there's always a bit of luck. The other thing that I had was I had an internship at a company called Pratt & Whitney Canada. Now, my internship was actually in the business unit, but while I was there, I tr went out and seeked for anything that could be related to engineering. So I was working with spreadsheets. I didn't want to just say, oh, I played with spreadsheets, whatever. Like I seeked out work. So what I did was I actually learned VBA, which is the programming language for Excel and Access. It's actually really easy. I just Googled the commands. Like if you can code, if you can like write scripts in MATLAB, then you can do it in VBA. Um, and I just like automated a lot of the processes for people because they were just like punching in like line by line, the same thing in Excel. And I was like, what are you doing? They're like, oh, I don't know VBA. And I'm like, you can just like Google how to do a loop. Anyway, so that's what I did and then I was able to sort of relate my work experience to being like, I'm problem solving. So I have my grades, my GRE score, my motivation letter. Oh, I had a lot of extracurriculars, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna help you. I don't, like, out of all of this, I don't know what got me in, probably a little bit of everything, but my extracurriculars were like, I was on the like the student council for mechanical engineers for two years at McGill. I was also, I organized, and <laughs> this is gonna sound really intense, I organized an international kayaking competition on the St. Lawrence in Montreal, where like kayakers from literally all over the world came to compete here. It sounds like, yeah, it's a little crazy, but it doesn't mean that you have to do that. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know if I put that on my resume when I applied, sorry. And I was also, this is gonna sound also kind of funny, I was also on like Team Canada for whitewater kayaking um, for like four years or six years. So I also put that down, but I don't know if that helped. I think it just like makes my application pop out because they're like, what's whitewater kayaking? Anyway, that is how I think I got into ETH, but out of all of that, I would say the main thing is reach out to professors. So actually, it's a funny story. I was in another lab. Now I love the lab I'm in. I actually applied to a different lab, and in that lab, I emailed the professor before I submitted my job application in December, and I wrote him like this short and sweet email, you know, saying like, you do what I do, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm applying, whatever, because sometimes it's like, the admission committee says, okay, she has this grade, da, 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 da. she passes into the pile for the professor to look at. And because you apply to a professor in mechanical engineering, for example, I don't know, all the different programs are different, but you apply to like a tutor and they only pick a certain number of students. So then the professor gets this pile of students and they have to go through them and they have to pick like three or something like that. He's going through them and he's just like, oh, Jessica, I remember that name, but I don't know you know, it just makes him stop for that split second and like it makes me seem more human and less like I'm just another student. Actually, when I emailed him, this was his reply. He was like, okay, see you in September. I was like, okay, so does that mean I'm gonna be accepted? And then I saw him in September, but then I switched labs because I didn't like his research and I really like my research now. Did you even think that you were like, that you should be emailing professors? Yes, you should be. They're gonna get a pile this big. They're gonna have to go through. Everyone is probably just as qualified as you. So how are you gonna make yourself stick out to them? How are you gonna make yourself not just another number? I know that was a lot of information, but I think it was really, really, really good information and I really hope you like it. 
And thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any more questions about getting into ETH, please leave them in the comments below. Um, like this video if you liked it, and please subscribe if you wanna know more.